Thank you for joining us. I didn't turn around to see how many of you tune into the 15s, but it sounded like a lot of you do. So thank you. I appreciate that. It's, um, it's, that's a real honor to do that. It's a lot of work, but it's a real honor. So I appreciate you joining us and thank you, Tim, for those kind words. What amazing times we live in. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's hard to put in words just how st significant and strategic these days are. We are in a season unlike any other. And uh, we must be very diligent in these times to stay in tune, to listen, to remain strong and committed to the cause. Amen? So I'm stirred to go several directions tonight, you know, and I, I'm not saying I'm going to go all those directions. I'm stirred in a lot of directions, <laughs> trying to, you know, when, when, when the prophetic anointing kicks in, it's like, you know, I'm sure you're the same way. You hear a lot of different things and you get in the atmosphere where it intensifies and you're just, you start hearing a lot of things if, in an atmosphere like this, if you are prophetic. I feel like we're, we're almost, um, it's, it's almost, it's so weighty what I feel in the spirit right now that it's almost like maybe this is some sort of a crossing over yeah. moment or time or day or week or something. It's, it's like everything has shifted into a different gear. Yes. And uh, of course, I'm always trying to ask the Lord, what, what is this? What do you, what do you? What are you saying? Um, you know, that's, that's how you, to me, that's how you get there. You ask him. And you listen to others that are asking him and, and hearing. So, you know, I, I just want to, I want to maybe do something now that I was, would probably have done a little later in this message. But uh, since most of you said you read the posts or listen, uh, I want to say right up front, there was zero collaboration between Tim and I regarding this Saul being transformed to Paul. Wow. And uh, uh, we communicate, obviously, mostly by text once in a while, but um, I'm sure that he is not able to read all the posts. I'm not even sure he knows I wrote about that this week, a couple of days ago. No, almost, though it hurt my feelings a little bit, I almost hope you didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. Well, and, and, you know, I mean, he's just like all of you. you. You get him when you can, but you probably don't see him every day. I see him every day. I know what I do every day. <laughs> But just a couple of days ago, I talked about a Supreme Court justice turning, and I used Saul as the example of that. So I can assure you I knew nothing about his word, and now he's confirming that he knew nothing about what I wrote. That should encourage you that this is the Lord talking. So I'll just briefly comment on that and we might even just pray into that again right now before I move on because God God uh, a person me just I gotta be real careful how I how I say this but a dream was sent to me regarding one of the Supreme Court justices that we would consider uh, to the liberal side of the bench. And this person was at a meeting, was brought into a meeting, a prayer meeting, carried in because this person was, 
had been overcome by Holy Spirit. What we would call slain the spirit. Call it what you want. They, oh, they were under the power of the Holy Spirit. So they were carried in. The person having the dream asked, who is this? They told her the name of the person. She realized, I know that name, but I can't place who it is. They brought the person into the room and began to pray over this person. And then as a, it was symbolic of Holy Spirit gifts, but they brought gifts in and began to give gifts to this justice. And um, then when she woke up, she Googled, or whatever she uses, the name of this person and realized it was one of the justices. Well, I didn't know what to do with this. You know, I mean, I get so many dreams sent to me and, um, you know, this, you know, a, a dream like that is, is so welcome and so, uh, you so want it to be right, but you can't just not judge dreams and words that are sent. We're supposed to do that and, and, and discern and ask the Lord, is this you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this was, I don't know, fairly late one night. I mean, it was probably 10 o'clock at night, maybe, maybe later. When the text came to me, the person passing this on to me from a friend of theirs who had the dream, a trusted prophetic friend of theirs that had the dream. And I was... At the time I received it, I was waiting through, I had been, I had a large envelope of letters and cards that had been sent to me from 15 listeners, GH15 listeners. And because of the holidays and some of the illnesses we had have had to deal with, I, I'm way behind in reading. I promise people, if you send it, I re I'm reading it. And I do, I read all of the correspondence um, unless you send me the chapter of a book you've written <laughs> and then I confess that I don't read all those but but your notes and cards I see them all but I was a couple of months behind so I was just waiting through it must have been a hundred of them in a package and I was just sitting there pulling out read them and put down and grab the next one so then the text comes, and I read the text, and wow, Lord, what, what is this? Is this you? I mean, this, is, this was a pretty strong word. I'm leaving out parts of it because I don't want to communicate who it was. And as I was saying, Lord, is this you? The very next card I pulled out of the envelope, dated back in December, He said, thank you for what you do, really appreciate it. I've really been praying for the court and this Dobbs case, abortion. And uh, I believe God's going to turn one of the justices and mentions the name. He said, I'm very burdened. I believe God is going to turn this person. Now, what are the odds? It'd be, you know, I mean, I'm trying to get to this for weeks I finally make it to this DAC halfway through the text comes the next one I pull out is a confirmation of the very dream the person that was sent to me in the dream and then of course when I wrote about this I almost I didn't know whether to, to share it at all because you know, I don't, I don't want to, you just never know who sees this stuff. And I don't want a person to think, oh, they're targeting me now, huh, you know, and you know, prayer, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to be wise with it. But I thought, okay, I'm going to do this and not communicate who it is. And I used the example of Saul. What, two days ago? Something like that. You, do you have your mic? 
don't know if you have it. Just to say this accurately. Yeah. I got that word two and a half years ago in Dallas, and Thursday morning I woke up, and Holy Spirit said it's come to its moment. That's why I, I wish you. This. Okay. Oh, well, I wish you had your microphone, but. What? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I I just feel like something. I feel something on this. I would like. I don't want to try to repeat it. I, I want him to to say it. Just. To, I was in Dallas, Texas, and I had that vision and the download of prophecy that is more extensive than that. So that was two and a half years ago about the this, this saw and, and you, the, what I just gave. Thursday morning when I got up, Holy Spirit. But yesterday. Yesterday morning. And I didn't read what you. Uh, you're traveling. I get it. But I mean, I mean, <laughs> but the thing is. Holy Spirit prophesied it two and a half years ago, even and you you got it in December, but you didn't read it till now. And I wake up Thursday morning and, and he says it's in its moment, and then you have it on. I mean, it seems like something's in its moment. So here's here's what I also believe. I don't believe. And you alluded to this, I believe, in the word, Tim. I don't believe it's just one person on the court. I believe we're moving into a season of supernatural encounters people are about to start having. And it's and they're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see people come to Christ and become passionate, radical lovers of, of Jesus who some of them will be shocking. You know, that's why I include the verses I include in the post to, to remind people of just how radical on the other side Saul was. Dragging believers out of their homes and throwing them in prison. Overseeing the stoning of Stephen. He was as radical anti-church and Christ as you can get. But, and it's not that God just chooses to save some. He, well, I'm so, I'm so strong, I can just do it to anybody. No, he can't save just anybody. Some people have so hardened their hearts that God, and they're so deceived and, and God can't turn them. A Judas a Herod, a, a Hitler, I mentioned in the post. But some people are, are uh, deceived and anti-things in a wrong way who are simply deceived. And Paul was one of the, Saul, he was one of those. He, he was one that God could redeem because he thought he was doing right. So there are people right now that are simply deceived and God's going to be able to turn them. Now what he will do, it's not that he just chooses some and not others. I just told you what I believe about that. But he does wait for the right time. And he, he did, I'm sure, choose the timing of Saul and, and Paul. And I believe it is also based upon the prayers of the church. I believe the intercession of the early church regarding the persecution that was taking place was was a part of what enabled the Lord to do it when he did. And I believe we have come to a point where many prayers we've been praying, not just in this issue, but others as well, have reached their moment of fulfillment. That their, the power has been building, the bowls have been filling, and 
it's changing things in the spirit realm and in the atmosphere. And of course, the warfare intensifies when that's happening because Satan is, I believe, angry and terrified right now at what he hears and decides by watching. He can hear the same words we're hearing. He can observe what we're observing. He's not omniscient, but he's an observer and he's been doing this for thousands of years. He's good at it. He knows what's coming and he's angry and he's trying desperately to stop it. And he stirs up wicked people around the world and evil spirits around the world and, and tries to stop what God is doing. So the warfare intensifies as well. But we've come to a, a point in time right now where God is about to, to pour those prayers of the saints into the earth. The thunder and lightning and power and judgments of evil. And this harvest that's coming. So Lord, we pray into that word right now. We pray for leaders, not only in America, but elsewhere. We, we pray for people with influence. We pray for people in government. We pray for this person on the court, but we pray for members of Congress, governors, legislators, mayors, people in the executive branch of our government and other places around the world. We pray, Lord, that you would release the power of salvation. Holy Spirit, your anointing to lift the veil off of the eyes and remove the deception so that they can see clearly. We command the lifting of the veil and the spirit of revelation into these people now in Jesus' name. We say, Lord, let angels be dispatched to them even now. Let miracles take place in front of them even now. Lord, whatever they have to see, Saul, 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 Stephen. He witnessed all of that, Lord. It moved his heart. It, I believe the glory that Stephen saw somehow impacted this man. And though Stephen became a martyr, his death was not in vain. And so, Lord, we say, raise up the apostle Pauls of our day. Raise up evangelists and prophets and apostolic leaders and intercessors and, and, and Lord, teachers. Raise up people who will be, uh, some who sow millions, maybe billions of dollars into your kingdom in this hour because they are transformed from darkness to light. We, we, we don't stagger, Lord, in unbelief. We don't waver in unbelief over this whatsoever. We release your lightnings and your judgments and your thunder that is poured from the bowls of heaven, the prayers of the saints. We say this is the season. This is the hour. This is the hour of power. This is the hour of shaking. This is the hour of outpouring. We just say, release it into the earth in Jesus' name. And transform them now, Lord. And may we have discernment when it happens to know when it's real. It's a real good time. Sometimes you just need to pray in the Spirit because God knows who, he's, who we're talking about. We don't, but He does. So if we're praying the Spirit right now, Holy Spirit will just focus right in on certain people this is going to happen to. So if you have your prayer language, just do it right now. Don't be bashful about it either. Just Come on, Lord, save them. Mashe, mashe, katavas. You guys jump in if you want to, if you get... Greg, Tim, you want to decree, you want to prophesy, just come up here. All over the world, Lord, and we're not talking about just America. 
Sobolo Kote Zeveka Maha. We release kingdom anointing and authority throughout this nation and the nations of the earth right now. Prakosava Kiate Sobla Katasa Shamara Katasava Kavetehe Mako Sovondo Murara Bahaka from darkness to light. From darkness to light, Lord, from darkness to light, from darkness to light, from opposing you to working for you, from hating you to loving you, from demonized to set free, from, from evil agendas to falling in love with your word and your ways. Thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. Well, we may revisit that in a few minutes. I like it where, you know, the, 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 the church has matured to the point where uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to stay in a certain place. Amen. You can just stop and pray anytime you want, turn it into a prayer, prophesy. I love it, don't you? Go figure. We let Holy Spirit do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. So I was out late one night this week. Could have been that night, I'm not sure, that day when I reached that post. But, and I was out praying and I, I, uh, I was just, I was grieved in my spirit. I was, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I watch some things and I see some things and you see the, the, tragedy that's taking place in Ukraine and we will pray for Ukraine in a few minutes and if any I can't imagine anyone there could be watching if they still have the technology to do it I know they tune into meetings for encouragement here and elsewhere but if they are we're praying for you God's going to give you grace and strength and he's going to He's going to turn this somehow, and he's going to, he still has a plan to use Ukraine for his glory. But, you know, when I watch the images, and don't buy into the thing that it's all phony and it didn't really happen. In. It is happening. And when I watch it and I see the suffering, you know, it's just hard to watch. It's heart wrenching. See the women, the children, the, the the men too. But you know, something about seeing kids get hurt and suffer. It's just. But then you know, watching the State of the Union and think, you know, how far have we fallen? You know, and I don't want to get into that. Now, let me just pause and say this. Maybe I should say this more often when I speak, because I'm perceived as political. I'm not political. I'm governmental. There's a difference. God is into government. He's not into politics. He hates the political spirit, but he is government. So when you talk, say bad things about the principle of government, you're saying bad things about God. Say all the bad things you want to say. You can cuss as far as I'm concerned when you're talking about political spirit. But <clears throat> Maybe I should talk about the religious spirit too. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes there's just certain words that work better. I don't know. But anyway. But I... 
I will just say this, be careful that you don't put your faith in a political system, a political party, or a person. It will not be the elections that are coming up later this year that saves America. And it will not be the elections in 2024 that save America. There will be no person that saves America, and there'll be no party, there'll be no group of senators. Having said that, it is all critically important. What happens in November this year is critically important because God does use people and what happens in 2024 will be critically important. But our faith is what is in God. And as long as we keep our faith in God, then our prayers are right. And we don't misplace our faith. And God can't use our prayers when we do that. So it is the prayers of the church that will save America. It's the power of God through the prayers of the ecclesia that will save America. America will be saved. It is being saved. But it's not Donald Trump that's going to save America. And it's not the Republican Party. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's who's going to save America. <clears throat> and he's going to use certain people to do that. And that's wonderful. And, and we're going to be involved. I'm always active in my prayers during election cycles. I go in and out of D.C., as you know, on a you know, fairly regular basis to pray. I'm into all of that. But my faith is not in a person or a party. My faith is in God. And that's where we're going to keep it. But I was out and I, you know, I was grieving over the state of the nation and just thinking how far we have fallen from where we once were as a nation. The turning away from God, the turning away from morals and the Bible, biblical ideals, biblical worldview, uh, certain laws that have been written and decisions made by the court. And, you know, I, I don't think even if you're filled with faith that God is going to change things, I don't think that that necessarily makes you indifferent and insulate you from grief or anger. There are times when, though I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, I wish I had a microphone, I could do this, but you can suffer with me, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm not wavering in my faith for this nation, but I am grieving over what what we have done. Sometimes I'm angry. And sometimes I go out in my backyard and cry. And that's what I did this week. I just get it out. And then go back to prayer. Excuse me. And while I was praying and thinking, the Lord took me to the passage I'm going to read now. I'm going to speed this process up and not keep us here all night. So. so in the book of Ezra, it's all about the restoration of a nation. And that nation is Israel. If we went back to chapter 1 and 2, which we won't, you see the process of how God moves on the heart of a king who is not even a godly king. 
of Cyrus, who gives favor to Israel to allow them to go back and begin rebuilding the temple. They had been taken away as captives into Babylon because of their sin. Jeremiah prophesied this would happen. Seventy years of captivity, it happened. Then God moved on the heart of Cyrus, uh, who had been prophesied of by name that he would do this. And he gave them favor, and a group was sent back under the leadership of Zerubbabel. So that gets us to chapter 3. And I'm reading from the message. So if you don't have a message, you just I wouldn't try to follow me in a Bible. I just, because you'll get wondering where, where, you know, comparing translations, and you might miss something. So here we are. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled into their towns, that is, those who went back, the remnant that felt led to go back, whose heart moved them to go back. It's always a remnant. You'd think they would have all been moved on to go back, but they weren't. But a remnant was moved upon to go back and rebuild. So when the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled into their towns, the people assembled together in Jerusalem. Jehoshua, or Joshua, son of Josadak, and his brother priests, along with Zerubbabel, the son of Sheathiel, and his relatives went to work and built the altar of the God of Israel to offer whole burnt offerings on it, as written in the revelation of Moses, the man of God. Zerubbabel was the governor, civil governor. Joshua was the, the priest. So you've got the civil and the spiritual working together here. Even though they were afraid of what their non-Israelite neighbors might do, because the people back in the territory of Israel did not want them to rebuild. So they were a little bit intimidated about how they would respond. So even though they were afraid of what their non-Israelite neighbors might do, they went ahead anyway and set up the altar on its foundations and offered whole burnt offerings on it morning and evening. They also celebrated the festival of booths or tabernacles, feast of tabernacles as prescribed, and the daily whole burnt offerings set for each day. And they presented the regular whole burnt offerings for Sabbaths, new moons, and God's holy festivals or feasts as well as free will offerings for God. They began offering Hobart offerings to God from the very first day of the seventh month even through the, though the temple of God's foundation had not yet been laid. They gave money to hire masons and carpenters. They gave food and drink, oil to the Sidonians, Tyrians in exchange for the cedar lumber they had brought by sea from Lebanon to Joppa, a shipment authorized by Cyrus the king of Persia. In the second month of the second year, after their arrival at the temple of God, Jerusalem, Zerubbabel and Jeshua, in company with their brother priests and Levites and everyone else who had come back to Jerusalem from captivity, got started. They appointed the Levites, 20 years of age and older, to direct the rebuilding of the temple of God. Joshua or Jeshua, and his family joined these other guys along with the extended family of this other guy. <clears throat> Sometimes you just skip over rather than show your ignorance, okay. All Levites to direct the work crew on the temple of God. When the workers, when the workers laid the foundation of the temple of God, the priests and their robes stood up with trumpets. And the Levites, sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise God in the tradition of King David. They sang antiphonally praise and thanksgiving to God. Yes, they said God is good. Oh yes, he'll never quit loving Israel. All the people boomed out hurrahs, praising God as the foundation of the temple of God was laid. As many were noisily shouting with joy, 
many of the older priests, Levites, and family heads seen the first temple. When they saw the foundations of this temple laid, wept loudly for joy. People couldn't distinguish the shouting from the weeping, the sound of their voices reverberated for miles around. That's always fascinated me. Some rejoiced, shouted for joy, and the older folks wept. Let me keep reading. I'm going to read, I guess, five, six more verses quickly. Old enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles were building the temple of God, of the God of Israel. They came to Zerubbabel and the family heads and said, let us help you. We worship your God the same as you. We've been offering sacrifices to him since Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, brought us here. That was just a lie. Zerubbabel, Joshua, and the rest of the family heads of Israel said to them, Nothing doing. Building the temple of our God is not the same thing to you as it is to us. We alone will build for the God of Israel. We are the ones King Cyrus of Persia commanded to do it. So now, verses 4 and 5. So these people, the bad people, started beating down the morale of the people of Judah, harassing them as they built. They even hired propagandists to sap their resolve. Those are lobbyists. Some translations say they are. Sometimes they say counselors. They are people hired to bring political pressure against them. They even hired propagandists to sap the resolve. They kept this up for about 15 years. Throughout the lifetime of Cyrus, and into the reign of Darius King. I could hold that if I need to. I still want to cut out in it for the recording and for them miss a word or two here and there. Sometimes I'm so powerful it shorts out things. <laughs> We're going to go with that because you can't, you can't prove that's not what happened. <clears throat> so so the, the book of Ezra is interesting and it covers a hundred year period. And it skips around and sometimes jumps ahead for years. So there's 16 years between verse 5 and the rest of the chapter. Because what happened was they had favor, this move of God to restore based upon the word of the Lord. And when the word of the Lord was believed and, and acted on, favor came, even favor from a pagan king who said, yeah, you can go back and do this. And this pagan king restored all of the gold and silver that had been taken by Nebuchadnezzar and said, Here are all, here's, here are all the utensils, all the gold, all the silver, everything he plundered from your God's temple, here it is back to you. A pagan king. So a word of the Lord, believed on, acted on, brought favor. God moved on the people, and a remnant of them said, I'm going to go, I'm going to uproot. To keep in mind, they'd been in captivity 70 years. Most of them had put down roots in another land by now. It was no small thing to uproot, leave everything behind, and go start over. There was only one reason to do it. Your heart for Yahweh. The rest of them had been assimilated into the other nations. 
So they go back and they receive favor and they lay the foundation and there's great joy and shouting and then yet the older people are weeping. But the enemy there doesn't like what's happening. And they get organized. And they start sowing seeds into the next king, Cyrus, but Darius as well. Or Xerxes, I don't know if I have more. I think that's, those are two the same. Artaxerxes and Darius, are they the same? You don't know. You get, they don't know either. Some of these guys go by two or three names, and it's hard to keep track of them. But anyway, they stirred up lies, and they started saying to the king, now, hey, these people have a history of rebelling. And if you let them get entrenched and rebuild this temple, the next thing you know, they're going to rebel against you, and they're going to stop sending taxes to you, and it's going to hurt your kingdom. And the king said, well, well, yeah, I'm okay. I don't know if I want this stuff going on. So intimidation set in to God's people. And after they had their slab foundation party, the work stopped on the temple for 16 years. 16 years years and I'm not at all suggesting that God was saying to me that the number of years is the same but I am saying to you that God spoke to me that there are many in the church that have lost their passion for revival and for intercession. And it is down to a remnant that are fighting this fight. There is a temptation now to say, let's quit fighting and just just go back to building our churches and doing our thing and maybe everything is just going to go to hell and then Jesus will come and rescue us. And we believe in the Lord's return. That's not, what, that's not what is insinuated there. But I'm not into escapism. And there are many who 20 years ago were fervent intercessors for revival. But when the revival didn't come as quickly as they had hoped it would come, the fire has gone out. The lobbyists and the, the, the evil workers in government and education, who would have thought, who would have thought who, who would have, in their wildest imagination, have thought 50 years ago that they would be teaching kindergartners, talking to them about trying to change their gender? It, and so this <clears throat> onslaught of evil You know, and, and, and you get a little victory, and then you lose a little ground. And you feel like you're making some progress, and then idiots take over again. Yeah. And it, it, it's just, it, it requires a strong, deep connection with heaven and a connection of faith and a conviction that you have heard from God and those you believe in have heard from God for you to stand in the midst of all of this and say, I don't care what it looks like. I know what he has said and he's going to do this. And there's a reason why I say almost every day on those posts, America shall be saved. 
There's a reason I say it. Because the enemy is relentlessly telling people in the body of Christ, that's not going to happen. And that this awakening is not coming. And America will never turn. And there are some who just want to somehow survive. And I'll just say to, to those, for those that, that are tempted to do that, you're not going to be able to do that without hearing truth and somebody say to you, you're not going to be able to, to crawl in any hole or back up in any way and do it without being confronted with the word of the Lord that he said this and he's called us to do this and come what may, we're going to persevere and you're going to have to make the choice to back up while hearing the word of the Lord because we're going to say it. I've never, never been in this, there's never been a season in my lifetime where a clearer line has been drawn in the sand. There is no middle ground any longer. Your attitude is give up and give it away or fight with everything in you, the fight of faith and intercession and spirit-led decrees and stand up and be everything he's called us to be in the spirit and in the natural with the force of faith and as patriotic Americans and stand up and say, not on my watch. You can't have it. You're not having our kids. You're not going to have this generation. We're going to take them back. They're going to see. They're going to experience revival. All the stupidity is going to be broken off of them. And they're going to see clearly just how stupid and idiotic some of this stuff is. There is a group of people. There is a remnant. There's a remnant in the church that is standing up. And there's a bigger group in the nation that don't know how to do what we know how to do, but they're fed up with it also. They know when things, they know what happened in the election. They, they, they know what's going on. They know, how, they know what the enemy's trying to do. They know our nation, that, that forces are trying to steal our nation and make it a socialistic nation that's no longer strong. And they know what the globalists are doing. This is why, you know, even though Trump is, is crass and mean-spirited sometimes, they just don't care because at least somebody's standing up and saying it. That's what they fit. That's the way they think. I don't care if he gets mean once in a while. At least his his uh, policies we we agree with. So there's a group of Americans that are standing up and saying, "We're not gonna we're not gonna take it anymore. We're just not." We've been standing here looking at a slab for 16 years intimidated, backing up, trying to get along with all these other people that don't like what we do. And they don't want us to, they don't want us to be patriotic. They don't want us to love the nation. They don't want us to teach our kids. They tell us, you don't have the right to teach your kids. We have the right to teach your kids. You shut up, do your thing on Sunday morning. The rest of the time you go to work and be quiet. We don't want you saying this. We don't want you doing that. And you do it. We own all this stuff now. We'll just shut you up and censor you. And if you don't like that, we'll put masks on you forever. And I'm not mocking anybody who wears a mask. I'm just talking about the way they've used it. 
and what they've done to our kids. And so there's this war now for the soul of a nation. And there's no other way to say it. It's just a fact. There's a war for the soul of a nation. We either let them have it and turn this nation into something that is completely different from what we've been for 200 plus years and become something else entirely. And they won't even admit we've been that because they're trying to rewrite the history. And so the church has been tempted and for a while we've, we did this and that's, this has been changing, but we just said, well, we started this process, but maybe we should just get along. There is no getting along. Getting along is giving it away. I, I'm not talking about being mean. I'm not talking about hurting people. I'm talking about not talking about shooting people. I'm not talking about getting ugly in that sense. I'm talking about standing up for truth. Okay. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I love them all. I'll lay my life down for sinners. I will. I would. I will. I love them all. But I'm not going to compromise truth and give away what I'm not supposed to give away. I think I'm preaching to the choir. I don't think anybody's going to run up here and try to beat me up. Maybe, maybe they will, but Greg will get them if they do. I'm just trying to make the point that many have backed off and said, let's just, let's just, even, even people in government that should know better. Said, well, give them an inch. Uh, uh, give them another inch. Give, give them another inch. And now there's a people that are rising up and saying, we're, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do it. We're not going to give this nation away. And believers are saying, we're not going to give away our heritage and our destiny in Christ. We're not going to do it. And we're going to pray. We're going to try to, we're going to love and we're going to try to win people for Jesus, but we're not going to give it away. So, I said I was going to hurry up and I didn't, but I'm going to hurry up now. So after 16 years, God raises up a prophet. And he says, Haggai 1, message. On the first day of the sixth month of the second year in the reign of King Darius of Persia, God's message was delivered by the prophet Haggai to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, who had such a great start and led the remnant back, started the rebuilding. But he had a bit of a setback. And to the high priest Joshua, same thing. A message from God of the angel armies. Quote, this is God talking. The people procrastinate. They say this isn't the right time to rebuild my temple, the temple of God. Remember, it's been sitting there a slab for 16 years. They say this isn't the right time to rebuild my temple. So, so they justified Stopping based on the fear and the discouragement and the opposition. And of course, hey, you know, I mean, the king's upset. I mean, we can't, you know, we got to kind of get along with the king and he wants us to stop. And so, you know, we're just going to stop this for a while. So they did. Shortly after that, God said more. And Haggai spoke it. How is it? that it's the, quote, right time for you to live in your fine new homes while my temple is in ruins. 
And then a little later, God of the angel armies spoke out again. And I quote him through Haggai. Take a good hard look at your life. Think it over. You've spent a lot of money, but you haven't much to show for it. You keep filling your plates, but you never get filled up. You keep drinking and drinking and drinking, but you're always thirsty. You put on layer after layer of clothes, but you can't get warm. The people who work for you, what are they getting out of it? Not much. A leaky, rusted out bucket, that's what. End quote. That's why God of the angel armies said, and Haggai quotes him again, take a good hard look at your life. Think it over. Think it over, America. Think it over, church. You better think about what you're going to do. Then God said, here's what I want you to do. Climb into the hills and cut some timber. Bring it down and rebuild the temple. Do it just for me. Honor me. You've had great ambitions for yourselves. Nothing has come of it. The little you have brought to my temple, I've blown away because there wasn't much to it. And why? This is a message from God of the angel armies. Remember, because while you've run around, caught up with taking care of your own houses, my home is in ruins. That's why, because of your stinginess. And so I've given you a dry summer and a skimpy crop. I've watched your tight-fisted stinginess by decreeing a season of drought, drying up fields and hills, withering gardens and orchids, stunting vegetables and fruit. Nothing, not man or woman, not animal or crop is going to thrive. Then the governor, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and the high priest Joshua, and all the people with them listened, really listened to the voice of their God. When God sent the prophet Haggai to them, they paid attention to him. In listening to Haggai, they honored God. Then Haggai, God's messenger, preached God's message to the people. And this time the word was, I'm with you. God says, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm ticked off, but I'm not so ticked off that I'm abandoning you. I'm just trying to get your attention and say, come on, let's do this. And when their hearts turned, when they listened, he said, now I want you to hear this. I am with you. You feel that? I'm saying to America, if you listen to God right now, and I'm saying to the church, and I'm saying to the praying church, and I'm saying to those that give up, if you will stir yourself up again. If you will stand up again, God is saying, I'm with you. I'm going to back you up. Pastor, that you've compromised the message to get along because you don't want to offend some of your congregation that may be a little to the left. If you're convicted enough to to say to God, I'm sorry, and I'm going to start preaching your word with boldness and not compromising, I say this to you. If you're willing to do that, he's with you. If you're not willing to do that, he's not with you. This is how God got Zerubbabel, Joshua, and all the people moving. Got them working on the temple of God of the angel armies. 
It happened on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of God came through the prophet Haggai. He's prophesying again now when they get on the right track. Tell Governor Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and high priest Joshua, and all the people, is there anyone here who saw the temple the way it used to be, all glorious? And what do you see now? Not much, right? So get to work, Zerubbabel. God is speaking. Get to work, Joshua, high priest. Get to work, all you people. God is speaking. Yes, get to work, for I'm with you. The God of angel armies is speaking. Put into action the word I covenanted with you when you left Egypt. I'm living and breathing among you right now. Don't be timid or timid. Don't hold back. This is what God of the angel army said. Before you know it, I will shake the sky, the heavens, and the earth oceans and fields and I'll shake down all the godless nations then I'll bring bushes of wealth and I'll fill this temple with splendor God of the angel army says so I own the silver I own the gold this temple is going to end up far better than it started out a glorious beginning but an even more glorious finish a place in which I'll hand out wholeness and holiness decrees the God of angel armies the way it's said in the translations, you know, you, you, you know and recognize more, the latter glory will be greater than the former. And he's saying to us right now, if we, if we continue to persevere and those that have backed off, if you just step up to the plate again, cross the line, say, I'm in. God says, I'm going to restore the glory, but it's going to be greater glory. I'm going to restore this nation, but it's going to be great, a greater nation. I'm going to restore the church, going to be a greater church, going to be greater than it's ever been, going to be your finest hour, going to be greater miracles, going to be more salvations, going to be more power to deliver people that are bound by demons and blinded by deception. I'm coming with my power if you will just respond to me. And those that try to resist you, I will shake them. And the verse, the passage that is starting to be heard a lot right now from Hebrews 12, where it talks about the shaking of the kingdoms and everything that can be shaken will be shaken except the kingdom of God will stand. That's a quote from this passage in Haggai. So I'm going to read it from the message. Hebrews 12, 25, which we just decreed in Washington, D.C., by the way. There on 222 with a small prayer team, praying against the spirit of religion and the political spirit, the two partnering together trying to destroy this nation. And so the Lord gave a plan of how to pray against that. One of the verses that came in the dream was this passage in Hebrews. Don't tell me he's not talking to us through Ezra and Haggai. Because this is the passage he gave in the dream. And this is what we decreed a week ago in Washington, D.C. So don't turn a deaf ear to these gracious words that God had been speaking earlier in the chapter. You can read them later. If those who ignored earthly warnings didn't get away with it, what will happen to us if we turn our backs on heavenly warnings? His voice that that time shook the earth to its foundations. This time, he's told us this quite plainly, he'll also rock the heavens. One last shaking from top to bottom, stem to stern, the phrase one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, deeply reverent before God, for God is not an indifferent bystander. He's actively cleaning house, torching all that needs to burn, and he won't quit until it's all cleansed. God himself is fire. Yeah. 
So my message tonight is to say, don't give up. And for those listening to me who have backed up, compromised, watered it down, played along, been lured to sleep, hoping maybe it'll just be okay. It won't be okay. My message to you is, reach down deep into your spirit and find that which used to be there. There was a passion for truth that was uncompromising, that was fire, that believed in the unshakable kingdom of God and what he wants to do in this nation and the nations of the earth. Find that fire again and find that passion again. And stop apologizing for moves of the Holy Spirit. Stop apologizing for having a service that's more than an hour. Stop apologizing for making a stand for truth or righteousness or, yes, even patriotism. We are not an evil nation. We do not want to take over the world. We want to save the world. So I, I say to the remnant, if you're tired, take a day and rest and get it together. If you're grieving and angry, go out in your backyard and cry for an hour and then suck it up and say, here we go again. If you've bought into any of the lies, make your decision now that you will not buy into it any longer. You won't compromise any longer. You won't compromise truth. That You won't back up an inch. You don't have to be mean-spirited. You don't have to talk ugly to people. You don't have to meet, treat people mean or ugly when they're in sin and doing things you don't believe is right. You're supposed to love them. You're supposed to pray for them. You're supposed to reach out to them. But you're not supposed to let them take over. Boy, am I going to get the mail over this one. You'll get it too, won't you? Awesome. <laughs> Send all of my criticism to the Oasis, Middletown, Ohio. <clears throat> and so demons are... They're upset right now. <laughs> because they see where we are in the earth. They know that things are hanging in the balance. Either a worldwide revival comes and saves a billion plus souls, maybe two billion. <laughs> and entire nations are transformed and Regions of the planet that have been under their control for millennia. Parts of planet Earth that have not been out from under demonic control since the fall. Are about to be visited with a great outpouring of Holy Spirit and set free. And, and he's, he's irritated by this. He wants to stop it. He always thinks he can stop it. And sometimes he does delay things. Not because he overpowers God, but because of God's people. 
through whom he works. And God just does it 40 years later through the next generation. But he's going to do it. He's going to give Jesus everything he promised him. And so he knows that <clears throat> Satan knows that God needs America in order to accomplish this. You can see just in the last few months what happens around the world when America weakens. Demonized people that want to rule the world start rising up and say, this is our chance. This is our window. We need to move now. God help us. We need to pray for Taiwan. So they're all fired up. Demons. Satan. And we're going to have to stand up with clarity. I don't know how to be any more clear than what I'm about to say. God is not punishing the people of Ukraine. A demonized man who is evil to the very core of his being, who cares nothing about anything but himself and power, is controlled by principalities. What about the evil in Ukraine? Well, what about the evil here? I said in the post a few days ago, people that say, well, God's judging Ukraine. They, have a, they don't have as many, nearly as much sin in the last few decades as America does. 60 million babies. We lead the world in the exporting of filth and pornography. We have rebelled and said, God, we don't want you. You're not allowed in our government. You're not allowed in our schools. But we're going to point to another nation over here and say, well, God's, you know, he says this is all punishment from God. And I know what the stuff that's floating around out there, and I can see some of your wheels turning right now, but you need to listen to me. Even though God always uses things like what's happening there to bring cleansing and hopefully revival, that does not mean he is behind it and he is behind the evil and the suffering and turning his wrath on a nation. I'm telling you right now, that is not what's happening in Ukraine. You need to listen to me. And I didn't intend to go here tonight, and I really opened a can of worms, didn't I? Well, I'm just going to sling the worms all over the room. This is a time, and I said this in the post, this is a time for compassionate intercession. And of course we say, Lord, cleanse. And if there are evil rulers that, that he gets rid of in the process, fine, get rid of them in Russia and Ukraine. And get rid of them here while you're at it. And don't think that I haven't already gotten mail about this. I told my staff, stop bothering me with this mail. Stop, I don't even want to hear about it. God is not finished with Ukraine. Somehow he's going to raise that nation up again to be a voice of the kingdom into Europe. And he loves the people of Russia. Most of those soldiers had no idea where they were even going when this started. He loves those people as well. This is all an attempt by demonic powers to stop 
the move of God that God wants to bring to the nations of the earth, especially Europe. And we're not going to allow that to happen. We're going to intercede for his purposes and his kingdom to come and his will to be done. Always listen to me. Don't think I haven't agonized over what I'm saying to you for days, weeks before the war ever started. I knew it was coming. Don't think I have not spent many, many hours in the Lord's presence over this. Listen to me. Always err on the side of love and compassion. Always. 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 If there's ever a nation that has no right to point the finger at another nation and say, God's judging you, it is us. Let me just say that again. If there is any nation on earth that has no right to point the finger at another nation and talk about God's judgment, it is America. We exist still by the grace and mercy of God. And he's coming to save. But he's not coming to save because we're the best and he loves us the most and we deserve it. He's coming because we're asking him in mer- uh, for his mercy through the blood of Jesus, just like the others are going to have to ask. And because he has planned to use this nation for his purposes in this hour. And we're going to have to stay very focused on that, guys. Do not politicize this war. Are you listening to me? Do not politicize this war. Deal with it in the spirit. I've talked to my prophets that I run with. What do you think about this? And what do you think about the leader? He's not godly, but he's good. That's what Chuck said. I said, is God doing this? No, God's not doing this. But God's going to use it. I said, I can go with that. I can live with that. This is an attempt to distract us in our prayers. And I'm pleading with you, do not get distracted. And when you pray... Pray for God's mercy and his grace on the Ukrainian people. Pray that he ends this quickly. Somehow that he stops it. Somehow he preserves life. Pray, cry out to God for his mercy in Europe right now. That it goes no farther and somehow it stops. Pray for the, for the people making decisions. They'll make right decisions. Pray for the other European leaders. Pray that God stops this before it does become a World War III. Nothing would make Satan happier. I'm going to pray. You guys can come up and join me if you want. I'm just going to pray. I I feel like I need to pray. I'm going to pray through these worms. I just, I can feel the room right now. Everybody's like, I don't know what to do with this. Well, just pray about it. Lord, we come to you now for this nation, for America. 
We ask you, Lord, to awaken your people once again. Any who have backed off and lost vision and lost faith and lost confidence, I pray that you infuse them with strength. Infuse them with vision. Let them hear your words that you are coming to this nation. Cause them to rise up again in faith. And do what Haggai's, the, the leaders did in Haggai's day. They stand up and say, we will do this. We will finish this. And Lord, we pray for the nations of the earth right now. We pray that there, was, there is nothing that uh, will be allowed to happen that can stop what you want to do in the earth right now. We pray for great harvest in Russia. Lord, we pray for great harvest in Ukraine. We pray for harvest in Belarus, in Poland, in Hungary, in all the other nations surrounding, all the Eastern European nations, Lord. Bring a great revival to them. And Lord, anything the good that you can bring from this and cleansing of any corruption, by all means, we want you to do that. Lord, we ask you to, do the, the, to shake this nation to where uh, corruption is cleaned up here in America. Do it in other nations of the earth. But we pray for mercy to people. We pray for compassion with compassion. We say, save them, Lord. Let a great revival come to Afghanistan. Let it come to, to, uh, to, to Ukraine. Lord, let it come to Eastern Europe. Let it come to the Muslim nations of the earth. None of us deserve it come because of your grace and your mercy and your love and deal with evil wicked people in the earth stop them Lord in Jesus name Stand up, let's engage a little bit. Father, we thank you tonight that the enemy will not use this earth that belongs to you as his theater of destruction and division any longer. Father, we pray also tonight the release of angel armies over Taiwan. Father, we cut this thing off at the pass that China is poking at and they're trying to stir up and they're putting their foot in the water to see if it's the temperature is right just to go in. I decree today it's boiling hot and they'll not be able to enter that theater in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you tonight that your angel armies are moving around the airways, around uh, Asia and around Taiwan, over China even, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, tonight that the demonic principalities and powers are being handcuffed tonight and they'll not be able to go and to pursue the things that they're stirring. I decree tonight that the stirring of the pot concerning Taiwan is done in the name of Jesus. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying tonight that I am striking with a great lightning bolt to bet. For there are things, there are demonic entities that are ruling that region from the bed. And I'm striking that place with a great bolt of my lightning, says the Lord. And I am pulling down the principalities that have been sitting there and have created their thrones there. I'm taking that land back, says the Lord. For from there, they have controlled Asia and even America. And I'm pulling them down. Watch Tibet in these next weeks and watch Tibet as I begin to strike them with a great lightning bolt from heaven. Father, we pray over our nation's capital and those, Lord God, that are ruling from that place. Some there are legitimate Many are not legitimate, but God, we thank you that you are bridling the horse that is trying to run wild out of D.C. And Lord, as you put that bit in its mouth and you mount the back of that horse, Father, you are turning it back towards the barn. 
It will no longer be able to run wild. It will no longer be able to do its own thing. It will no longer be able to be the bully in the pasture any longer for you have set your bit in its mouth and you are turning its head by your hand now. I speak of those today that have declared themselves the Dukes of D.C. You've said that you're rulers and you've taken titles among yourself. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I am stripping you of your self-appointed titles and I am pulling you down to your knees for I am causing the wind of my spirit to blow. You're not dukes over DCs. You are dukes over the very things that you've been spreading around this nation and that is the dunghill that you've set yourself upon. I will not allow it any longer. For my remnant church has said, enough is enough. And I agree, enough is enough. So the Lord says, begin to watch D.C. For it's my wind that's beginning to blow there. And I'm beginning to turn things that are not nailed down over, says the Lord. And there are many things there that are standing upon their own strength. But my wind will begin to topple them. Uh, watch what I'm doing, says the Spirit of the Lord. And Father, we set our face like flint towards your will. And Father, we'll pray from that place. And we'll stand from that place. And we'll not be moved from that place, Father. And again tonight, Father, we put blinders upon our eyes tonight that we would not look to the left and to the right, but we would keep our eyes fixed on the vision and the assignment that you've given us from heaven of concerning this nation of America. And Father, we come into agreement with you tonight and we declare America shall be saved. And we decree tonight America is re turning to her prophetic blueprint and the things that you've spoken over her is springing up from the ground even now Lord and your kingdom from this nation will be the largest tree in this garden so Lord we bless the words of your lips over this nation and we bless tonight God the Ukraine the people there. We bless Russia. We bless Taiwan. And Father, that remnant, powerful ecclesia that has been underground in the nation of China is going to begin to find its way to the surface. And Father, they're not coming out as a weak need, rubber backbone, submissive people, but they're coming out as an army of the Lord, bringing the word of the Lord. Fivefold gift of mercy Urge now out of China. Ecclesia, come forth out of China and take your nation back. Master, forgive us, Lord, of the pharisaical curses against Ukraine, Russia. Cancel those word curses against them, Lord. And this ecclesia would ask for those kids in bomb shelters tonight, for those moms holding them, for dads that don't know if they're coming home. Not judgment, God, would you wrap your arms around them and assure them that the church of Jesus Christ has their back, that the ecclesia cares, that you, O oh God, can move on behalf of them. Somehow, God, would you bathe that nation in mercy?
God. We pray for comfort. We pray, God, that your presence would somehow begin to filter through the bombing, the loss of life. May we understand they love their children like we love ours. They love their families too. And Lord, as we heard earlier, you're the God that can turn around. The ecclesia rises. Let this one rise. Let, let there be guts to rise, Lord, and say this must turn around. Turn this, God. Turn this, God. Turn this, God. Let the intercessors put this war on their back, Lord, and turn it. I pray, God, for mercy. Mercy. Mercy, God. Mercy. I pray, God, that you would you would cause a U-turn in our leaders that have walked away as the story of the Good Samaritan. We can't walk on the other side. Somehow, God, show your wisdom. Or as we heard, love never fails. Love, compassion, mercy. May the voice of the ecclesia drip with authority, yes. But may it drip with love, concern, compassion. And with a faith that rises up and says, this will not stand. We will turn this by the power of the living God. Demon principalities will fold their wings and come off of their thrones. And we're going to win in Jesus' name. We declare the greater one is on our side. We are not those that submit to tyranny, despots. We are those that look to a holy God and say, that is enough. So, Lord, we speak enough. Do what you can do. Turn this, turn this, turn this. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Turn it. Give U-turns on Capitol Hill tonight. U-turns in the Congress tonight. Let Saul's be knocked off their donkeys tonight. Take a good look at what your passivity has done. Change. May the, may the Paul's Apostle Paul's rise. Shine it, God. May we understand, Lord, that, that Saul, Paul, is genderless. It's genderless. Raise up the Paul's. We're praying tonight, Lord, for U-turns on Capitol Hill. U-turns in the White House. U-turns among NATO. U-turns among nations. Lord, we have seen your mighty hand throughout history. We've seen you move, Lord. On behalf of people that stood before you, helpless, without any hope. But they dared say, our eyes are on you. And you came through with our brothers and our sisters and their families and their churches throughout Ukraine and Russia that have their eyes on you. 
miraculously move on their behalf. May we see miracles in the heavens. May we see turnaround in battles. May we see confusion in the camp of the enemies. Turn this around. Turn it 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 around. You're the way maker. You're the way maker. You're the way maker. Turn it around. Turn it around, God. Way maker. Show the world your power. Way maker move. Jesus, we do trust you. May the ecclesia, the true ecclesia, rise in this moment and define it. And define it with truth. Thank you, Lord. I declare you turns are happening in the cabinet of the President of the United States. U turns. U turns in the House of Representatives. U turns in the Senate. U turns in the capitals. Show this world, Lord, your love, your mercy, your compassion. We appeal to you, Lord. We appeal to you. We appeal to you. May our words drip like honey. Love.